Let's go to the big board. NBC News national political correspondent Steve Kornacki breaking down the numbers. And Steve, let's start there in the Republican Party. What did you see last night? Yeah, I mean, look, overall here, there are still a few votes to come in in Michigan. These numbers might change just a little bit. Uh, but Trump here, obviously, 68 percent. Haley down at 26 and a half percent. I think there's a couple things noteworthy about it. One, obviously, you had that Haley number in New Hampshire. She got 43 percent in South Carolina. She got 40. She had made this 40 percent idea of a 40 percent in Republican primary, you know, break from Trump for her. She made that a big part of her message that falls now into the mid 20s last night. Why did it fall into the mid 20s after being around 40 in the first two contests? Well, with the contours of Haley's support or for that matter, Trump's opposition in these Republican primaries so far has been very clear demographically. It has tracked very closely with educational attainment, particularly among white voters. That is to say, white voters with at least a four-year college degree have been the most Trump-resistant and the most willing to go and vote for Nikki Haley. Add in uh, white voters with college degrees who live in suburbs, who live in affluent areas. That is where we've seen Haley driving up her biggest numbers in New Hampshire uh, and in South Carolina. Now, take it to Michigan last night. Where were, where are those areas on this map? I'll show you a big one right here. This is Oakland County. This by itself is like 15 percent of the vote statewide in this province. Primary. And you can see here Donald Trump by nearly 30 points over Nikki Haley. This is of the two major northern suburbs of Detroit, suburban counties. You got Oakland County and you got Macomb County. Macomb County is the classic blue collar suburb built, you know, sort of by the uh, UAW, by the auto workers. Uh, that has been in the general election and in primaries, Trump country. But Oakland County is the big white collar suburb, G significant growth, higher incomes, higher levels of college degrees. Again, the exact kind of place place where Nikki Haley was getting real good numbers in South Carolina and New Hampshire to bring her up to 40. She didn't do that last night here in Oakland County. This was one of her big opportunity counties. If she wanted to replicate those earlier performances, fell to just 33 percent here. I think even more striking for Haley. You look down in Washtenaw County, University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan, Michigan University, affluence, yeah, all these things I'm talking about that are her demographic wheelhouse. And she couldn't even win her here. This is her best county in the state, her absolute best county of Michigan's 83 counties is right here. She got 44-7, and that's only about a point and a half above what she got in New Hampshire statewide. So you could see just slippage here for Haley. And one other thing I think to keep an eye on, to keep in mind here, too, is significant to interpreting these primary results in the Republican side, I think, has been the rules so far in the three primaries where Trump and Haley have gone one-on-one. -on -one. That is New Hampshire, that is South Carolina, and that is Michigan. And they have all allowed for the mass participation of non-Republican voters. And I think there's a lot of sort of suggestive evidence in the results so far that that has been a significant part of Haley's support in these states. And it's something that can come, and a lot of it may very well be coming from non-Republicans who didn't vote for Trump in 2020, didn't vote for Trump in 2016, have no intention, as you were just talking about, of voting for Trump in 2024. But because the rules allow them to participate and because their energy to vote against Donald Trump is off the charts high, uh, there's, a, I think, a lot of reason to suspect they're coming into these Republican primaries just for the chance to vote against Donald Trump. So in terms of what that means for November, I don't know. But I did think it's significant last night, as I said, that Haley fell from the low 40s down to the mid 20s. And if that if what I was just describing is or has been a phenomenon so far, it, it may be that it's cooling a bit as we get away from these contests like New Hampshire, where they had months to campaign, South Carolina, where they had a month. Now we're getting into the ones where they go, you're in for a day, you campaign, you go to the next state, you have multiple state primaries. Is that effect fading a bit? Because again, in Michigan, no party registration. You know, Anybody could vote in this primary yesterday. That was just the same rule you had in South Carolina, but a very right. different result.